what happens when the future that we planned for, a future that was years away, arrives ahead of schedule. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Thought Leader Chats. I'm Ronald van Loon, and today I'm here to introduce Antonio Neri. He's the president and CEO of HPE for his presentation on HPE Discover Virtual Experience. So the pandemic has shown us that no matter how prepared we thought we were, the unexpected and the unimaginable can really happen to throw our plans of course. And it's created a number of challenges that are new, that are unanticipated, and they're still emerging every day. So businesses and their teams, they continue to address these type of challenges and they create foundations to help them streamline their rocky path across the constantly evolving new normals. So it's becoming critical to shape our new narrative within the context of how the new normal unfolds. And what we build now in this moment of this crisis may very well be the new standard that really defines our future of success. So how can we address the most critical challenges and the most critical needs and create new beginning that can help us inspire positive change? And how can we eliminate obstacles between data and information? How do we promote more connectivity, insight sharing and real-time action when and where we need it most? Let's learn more from Antonio Neri. We are living in unprecedented times. The COVID-19 pandemic created many new challenges, not just for your technology, but also for our society as a whole. At HP, our purpose is to advance the way people live and work. Solving challenges like these is why HP exists. The future everyone talked about before the pandemic is now here ahead of schedule. Three years ago, we predicted the enterprise of the future will be edge-centric, cloud-enabled, and data-driven. Today, that's no longer a prediction. It is a reality. And we know this edge-centric, cloud-enabled world will require the right technology, expertise, and financial flexibility to help you accelerate your transformation. Like all of you, we are still learning about driving our business and serving customers through this pandemic. On the front line of our response here at HPE was Liz Joyce, our Chief Information Security Officer, with representative from every team across the company. I'm happy to have Liz with us today to share her insights. Welcome Liz and thanks for joining us and thanks to you and the entire team. During this unprecedented time, what were some of the most unexpected challenges that the team found? Yeah, thanks, Antonio. Um, I think we, like everybody, learned a lot during this event. Uh, the first thing that jumps to mind for me is the fact of the truly global nature of this event. You know, we as a company at HP have a good history with business continuity and resilience, but even we weren't fully prepared for a global pandemic. And so with the breadth and the scale of everything going on, we had to very quickly react and adapt and put in place a lot of global structures in order to support the massive amount of activity that was going on. So that was everything from 24-7 yeah. war rooms um, to all of the structures in order to have local action, but strategic and global decision-making, and all of that supported by a huge amount of communication. So we were managing globally, but at this local level. I think the other really key thing is around the fact that a crisis, in, in my mind, is normally a time-bound finite event. Uh, and it's usually measured in you know, minutes and hours and days and weeks. We've been in this for months. And so this is not a short-term crisis. This is a long-term sustained event. And so as we do things as part of the crisis and managing us, we need to think of them in terms of they may become foundational to what is going to be our new normal moving forward. And so we have to be very thoughtful in that, and make sure that we have sustainable and manageable processes. I think those have been the two biggest challenges to date. What we have learned during the pandemic, particularly the initial stages, this has revealed that there's a common theme among the obstacles we were facing within businesses. So it's important to have the ability to address the most critical needs like safety, like security, while ensuring that your business can really go on delivering services and products to your customers. 
And this isn't easy during disruption of this type of scale, which has fundamentally changed our perspective of the very era that we have previously existed in. Today's disruptive times, they have brought about changes that really supplant how we viewed, how we lived and how we worked and thrived in the world around us. So with that change, we have been forcibly catapulted into a brand new era defined by information. And now more from Antonio. As we recover, I believe it is important to focus on and discuss the future. Mary Meeker recently published a report titled Our New World 2020, which explores the impact of COVID-19. She made a striking observation in describing the state of the world at the height of the pandemic. She said, we are awash in data, but lacking connectivity and insight. Even in the early days of the pandemic, officials around the globe shared spreadsheets to track utilization and hospital capacity. We had enormous amount of data we couldn't analyze. And what we did analyze often created conflicting answers. Despite decades of investment in technology, there remained hundreds of dark, unconnected pools of data. Researchers and providers were overwhelmed by the volume of the data, unable to create insight and action from oceans of information. We cannot repeat this failure. I believe we are nearing the end of the information era, which focused on generating and collecting massive amounts of data. Data that could not be brought together to create timely insights and actions to change our future. The next decade must be about insights and discoveries that are shared and elevate the greater well-being of every human being on this planet. Today, we are entering the age of insight. Big data that would always get bigger, ever increasing, ever expanding. Every car, a sensor. Every phone, a suggestion. Every region, a cloud. Everything, a thing. Data was the golden promise of the information age, but more informed does not equal more intelligent. It's time to move to a new age, the age of insight. Now insights can combine with other insights and ideas can have ideas. Everything from edge to cloud can be connected by a single force, revealing opportunities you never knew were there. For smoother experiences, more intuitive products, and services yet to be imagined. So the information era, which was all about data, that's now behind us. We're now in the midst of entering a new era, the age of insights. Data alone is just simply data, but data can be transformed into insights and then becomes a very powerful tool. So businesses and governments and people need actionable intelligence. They need information that can be used to increase visibility, to inform immediate and future facing decision making and to promote a global network of information sharing and to create real solutions. But to do so, we need to rethink our approach to data and to insights. Let's hear what Antonio has to share with us about this. The age of insight require new principles and priorities for digital transformation. The focus is to build an edge to cloud platform that connects, protects, analyzes, and acts on all your data and brings agility to your apps to unlock your enterprise full potential. These capabilities will be mission critical to you and unique to your strategy, industry, and customers. Your edge to cloud platform will allow data and services to move without constraint. This is possible when you build up on open source cloud native technologies, optimized for a highly distributed infrastructure model based on proven trust and identity. Our future can unlock you and your data into someone else's wall garden. To make the next wave of digital transformation a reality, our first priority is to address the workloads that must be close to the data, whether at the edge or in data centers. 
Almost 10 years after public cloud emerged, more than 70% of apps and data are still outside the public cloud. They still lack agility due to data gravity, latency, and app entanglement. As a result, you have two divergent operating models, one in the cloud and one on-premises, while paying higher costs to maintain them both. In the next wave of digital transformation, I believe we will shift from a cloud-first mandate to a cloud-everywhere mandate. And to bring the next wave of digital transformation into focus, I had a chance to sit down with my good friend, John Chambers, founder and CEO of JC2 Ventures and former chairman and CEO of Cisco. Thank you for joining us today, John. I appreciate you making the time to speak with me and also to speak to the audience. We have an incredible cast attending this, uh, this webcast. Um, the first question I have for you, John, you have managed a powerhouse through six different market crises. It's just amazing, think about six market crises. You know, what advice you have for today's leaders as they navigate through this uncertain future? Well, it is my sixth financial crisis, my fifth healthcare crisis, although obviously the most severe, my third supply chain crisis. So I've seen the movie a number of times, and the playbook, both on what you do and learning from my mistakes of the past as well, is remarkably repeatable. First thing is, as a leader, you don't hide. You need to be very transparent out in front. Secondly, you want to be realistic. How much was introduced by the crisis you're dealing with and how much was the company also needed to change because you must address both at the same time. Then you basically say, what are the platforms or key focus area? I like odd numbers, five to seven platforms that are going to lead you through the crisis and prepare you for the outcome. You anticipate what are the elements here in terms of what you will look like 12 to 18 months, paint that picture for your employees, for your customers, your shareholders, your partners, and then you regularly communicate back on how you're moving toward those objectives. The platforms you deal with are usually around how do you control expenses, free cash flow, uh, your employees, your customers. You also want to say, what are my new big bets we're going to make through it? And the crisis always lasts longer than we anticipate and will usually be deeper. So you try to make your changes one time, prepare yourself for the future. Then what's exciting is once you do that, then you take your company, and remember my parents were both doctors. They taught me to deal with the world the way it is, not the way I wish it was. We all wish we could avoid this. But once you're here, what are you going to look like two and three and five years out? It's a chance to do a new IPO. It's how do you really position the company and your employees to not only survive this, but to lead in the next generation of great companies. In many ways, you reinvented yourself every yes. time there is a crisis. Learn from the past, um, you know, make a decision quicker, obviously, but also position yourself for you know, the massive opportunity ahead because where there is a crisis, there is an opportunity. So part of it is reinventing yourself, and I absolutely agree with that, but part of it is the aspects of the playbook you can run again and again. Reinventing yourself is the hardest thing for a CEO to do. It's how do you have the courage to say, let's learn from my, my strengths, but also what am I going to have to do differently in this next uh, area? You've got to disrupt or you get disrupted. You have to have the courage to initiate that vision and strategy and say how we're going to change, and this is where culture and communication become so important. You know, we are going through a crisis right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I believe the world is going to change forever. Um, we're going to live in a massive distributed world. And I believe many organizations are totally unprepared. They never thought they would send, you know, 100% of their people working from home. Um, I think, you know, you and I talked about the power of delivering outcome from the data. And so when we think about the next wave of digital transformation, what do you think are the key principles and priority customers should have in mind? Because you and I talked early on, it's not about the digital transformation, it's becoming digitally native in everything we do. So Antonio, when I really think about what's about to happen, first 40 to 50% of the Fortune 500 would not exist in a decade. It's going to be a brutal change, and these terrible events we're now seeing will actually accelerate that. Probably 60% of the startups won't exist in a decade, and a number of them won't exist in two to three years. So it's a period of time whether you either disrupt, 
or you get disrupted. Your ability to compete not against competitors, but compete against the new market transitions, the new business models, outcome focused, enabled by the internet of everything, big data and being able to analyze that, and then do the compute, do the storage, do the access to that big data, the applications, the security at the edge. And it gives a company a chance to really transform themselves into a uh, direction. One of the positives out of these challenging events will be companies will move much faster to a digital world. HPE, I think, is position yourself for how do you do that? How do you do it with innovation? How do you do it as the cloud moves to the edge? How do you use this digital, if you will, architecture to disrupt? So organizations have to rethink and realign their priorities to accommodate the next phases of digital transformation. And cloud is the catalyst in our ability to continuously ride this wave of digital transformation, no matter what it arrives from in. And the pandemic has completely upended our approach for businesses. Cloud everywhere is going to be the major factor in how quickly businesses can address challenges, transform their data and develop new resources to help support their recovery efforts and to the ongoing pursuit of innovation. And how this can help you. Organizations have to start preparing their people, their infrastructure, their workflows, the processes and foundation for a new era that's going to be more dependent upon insights and information than ever before. So barriers to information flow that have to be removed. And you need to effectively address your workloads that have to be close to your data sources. So edge and cloud technology is an integral part to helping you accelerate your recovery efforts and to create really stronger capabilities for the next stages of digital transformation. And this will also help you to promote real-time analysis of data that can provide you with immediate insights needed for your business critical initiatives and improved interactions and experiences. So you also need to focus on creating a robust organizational culture to support the speed and the agility to the next wave of digital transformation that it will bring. So it's important for us to be able to not only recover, but also jumpstart innovation again, so we can grow and we can reshape the world for the better. So as we put the information age in our rear view mirrors and drive forward into this age of insights, we need to shape the digital transformation under the umbrella of the next generation of needs. And this means cloud everywhere. This means real-time insights, uh, quick responsiveness, unconstrained data and, and service movement, and more intelligence. So a future that's shaped, but not defined by the uncertainty and the disruption of today's times, that's what we're going to see. I'm Ronald Van Loon, and this is The Intelligent World. <laughs>